Hello to all listeners of Nash Volus Ukrainian News Radio. My name is Dario Lysenko, and today I have the honor to speak to Help Ukraine Vancouver Arts Society. On there today, Carmen McNamara and Anastasia Constantino. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Uh, first, let's start. Uh, Carmen, in your opinion, what are some of the most pressing needs? and challenges uh, faced by Ukrainian newcomers on Vancouver Island now? So I think that we have four basic needs uh, that are the key ones. The first is shelter, so looking for housing and um, host support. The second is food, ensuring that people have a consistent source of healthy groceries. The third is community support, so ensuring that people are able to connect with others. And the fourth is learning English, because in order to adapt to Canadian society, learning English is probably the most important long-term skill. How is Help Ukraine and Cover Out addressing this? Yes. So these are our four key areas that we work on. Um, to help with housing, we have a host support team and a landlord um, landlord match team. Um, so these teams help to match host families and landlords with families and newcomers who are looking for the support. Um, to address food needs, we run seven uh, food share events throughout Vancouver Island, ensuring that people have access to healthy groceries. Uh, thirdly, for community events, we have our welcome basket team, which ensures that we connect with every family as soon as they arrive, ensure that they have uh, some basics and also that they know who to call if they get into trouble or there's an emergency or they don't know what to do. And also with the community support, we have monthly meet and greets, which allow people to simply come together, connect um, and find community. And then fourth is our English classes. So we have volunteers teaching English classes on Zoom, uh, providing these lessons and these uh, also support what's being offered throughout the community, um, organizations like ICA and so on that also offer English classes. It's amazing. And so, as I know, well, 1,500 people receive this support from Healthy Green and Cover Island, and this huge amount. And so, in this case, I have a question about this. What was uh, the first challenge when you just uh, thinking about uh, founding this organization? That's a great question. Um, so you are correct, as of today, it's 1,573. Mm -hmm. I can check the numbers before coming in. Um, but the first challenge that I had was making people care. Because when the full-scale invasion happened, I think everyone, we were all in a state of shock. Nobody actually expected this to happen. I remember watching CBC literally a week before this full scale invasion. We had, you know, Canadian reporters on the ground. They were talking to people and everybody was saying, no, it's not going to happen. Or, you know, I've got some extra water in my place. Or like, like, it just didn't sound like anyone was taking it seriously. And so there was no support or infrastructure in place. And so when that happened, we were in shock. We didn't have any supports in place. We didn't know what to do. And it was immediately clear to me that someone had to do something. And if nobody was going to do anything, I had to do something. But I couldn't do it alone. And so the biggest barrier I faced in the very beginning was just finding enough people who cared enough to do something. Um, once we had the people who cared, then we were able to get moving. Um, because I don't think that anything that we are doing is rocket science. Mm -hmm. We just need people moving in the same direction who are willing to do things and, and willing to do them imperfectly. Um, because Hubi has learned a lot over the last two years and definitely there are things that we do very differently now than we did at the beginning. But in the beginning it was just, let's do something. <laughs> Um, because right now there's nothing. I have a question for Anastasia as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Anastasia, what was uh, the reason for you to join the program of your art? First of all, I'm a person who has experience in wars. This is my second war and um, I know how it feels and I understand what people feel in the situation. And uh, when these wonderful volunteers brought a welcome basket for us, we were just shocked. We have a roof and we have food on our table and we have a welcome basket, you know. So that was something amazing. We didn't expect um, to get something from people who don't know us at all. It's like paying back. 
the kindness that you receive. Yes. So you continue to do this because yes. it's not just only one year I and mean, that you're doing a lot on your position as a project coordinator and you know it's not just like a project coordinator but as a new artist, right? So <laughs> let's talk about uh, wonderful uh, production. Okay. A dictionary of emotions in the war time. Mm -hmm. What was the first uh, the feeling when you received invitation to be an actress for this? I didn't receive an invitation. Oh, <laughs> I was fighting for it, right, Carmen? Uh, yeah, when I saw um, a Facebook post that uh, they were running an audition, the first thing um, I had in my mind, it's going to be my role. It's going to be my stage, because I wanted it so much. Um, and when I shared it with Carmen, she said, really, you are going to do that? So, so she didn't believe in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I understand why. She just didn't. She just didn't want to have a bad optics, and mm -hmm. that's reasonable because I work for a movie, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I say that we're gonna have a honest audition, right? Uh, and uh, we will have lots of people there, and I'm just going to try. So I did, and it was success, and I won. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> Did you change your mind? Maybe you can just also provide a little bit of uh, details about this uh, production because I'm not sure that all well, our audience know about this. I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I first got a copy of the script over the summer um, from Olena. And um, when I first started thinking about who we were going to cast, um, I'll be honest, Anastasia was not on my radar, um, primarily because I thought she was already too busy. And I was thinking, like, oh, I am. your husband will kill you if you're outside the house for even more time. Um, so it wasn't so much that I didn't think that she was capable, but rather that there are only so many hours in the day. Um, and, and also, it's true, the, the, I was concerned about the optics. And that's reasonable. Um, you know, and it was, it was important to me that we cast the best person who auditioned. And um, it needed to be a Ukrainian newcomer. Uh, Diana and I were both very clear about that. Um, but it also needed to be someone who spoke English well enough to be understood because the play is in English. Um, and so when I spoke with Anastasia, I said, you know, you're going to have the same chance as anybody else. Um, we had four people on the panel, um, myself and Diana, and then a couple of representatives from Lyon Court Theater. Um, because I really did want to ensure that it was fair. Um, and it was um, unanimous that Anastasia's audition was the best. Um, so we were very happy to cast her and, and certainly don't regret it. And really excited about the way that she and Kasusha have worked together. So a uh, Dictionary of Emotions in Wartime tells the true story of Olena a woman who was trapped in the occupied city of Kherson in the first six months of the full-scale invasion. And we follow Olena um, from the day that the Russians first invade um, to June, um, when she finds refuge in Ireland. And we go through her experiences, and we also hear from her friends, her colleagues, some of her relatives, and how that interacts with her experience and also how different people respond to the invasion in different ways. Yeah, it's great. And my question is, what do you think, is it our production change everything for the people who was involved in the, not just creation, but just in supporting Ukrainians and the poor others? I think that in staging this production, we were able to read focus Canadians on what's going on. Um, as the war continues, it's not headline news anymore. In particular, right now, there isn't a lot happening on a day-to-day -day that is making national headlines. I understand that there is a lot happening every day. Um, I actually listen to podcasts coming out of Europe every day so that I can keep track of what's going on on the ground, but I understand that most people don't do that. Um, and. I also appreciate that the only way that Ukraine is going to win is if we, not Ukrainians, you know, Canadians, Americans, French, German, British, Australians, if all of us give everything we can to Ukraine. Um, and I think Canadians forget that. I think Canadians forget how privileged we are. I think Canadians forget 
um, that ammunition is disposable. I think they forget just how expensive this war is, and I think they forget how expensive it will be if Ukraine does not win. And so in doing this play, it was really about reminding Canadians that we have a responsibility to step up. We're not being asked to go and fight. We're not being asked to send our children to go and fight. Um, we're just being asked to give money. We have the greatest deal in the world. So, you know, let's take it. Um, and um, I am also pleased to announce that we will be remounting the show. Wow. Uh, yeah. uh, we, and I just signed the contract yesterday, so I can say this. Uh, we open May 3rd at the Metro Theatre in downtown Victoria, Absolutely. and we'll be running uh, May you 3rd to 11th. It's, yes, it's a great. And so I think their audience will be less obsessed so obvious of this production. It's, it's huge. It is. And hopefully it will not snow this time. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> Anastasia, I also have a question for you. Yes. It's probably the same question that you just asked. Pardon, what is your opinion about uh, this play? And what do you think? Is it any changes for newcomers? Because we know that last production was uh, in Ukraine, and we here in the Ukrainian Cultural Center uh, was able to see this. So, question. I have lots of conversation after the play in English. Um, with Canadians. And I would like to add to Par Carmen's uh, answer that uh, yes, it was a good refocus for Canadians. Because what what they told me, they told, well, we watch the news, we see that you have bombs somewhere, it's terrible, people are dying, and these kind of things, we are standing with you. That was before they watched the show. But then they said, we realized that it's different. It's not like in news. We realized that there is a family, there is a woman, what kind of things they experienced during this terrible time. Because they didn't think about um, people who live there, for example, that woman, uh, Olena from her son. She needs to make decision right now. She needs to do something right now and they didn't think that way so they say we just looked at the situation differently and i think it's helpful because lots of people started you know think differently and that's helpful for us because they can donate money they can be volunteers they can be a host family um this kind of feedback uh, i received from canadians as for Ukrainians, it's harder for them to watch this show. But uh, I had also lots of conversation with uh, my friends, and uh, they said it's a great reminder for us because we are here almost for two years, or almost, almost uh, one year, and it's a great reminder for us that we need to donate again. We need to come and join your volunteers team. So, do you think their art and culture is a weapon in the provincial? Or something like that. Absolutely. Um, at its best, art is able to speak to us in a way that we can't in everyday dialogue because art is able to get under our skin. Um, if art isn't making us feel something, then it's not very good. Yeah. And just uh, recently had a conversation with Roman Kabachi about two days in Mariupol. He said the, the same words about. The culture about art that uh, if films, for example, don't touch people, so it's not really good films. It's the same as probably plays and productions and so on. Okay, so probably the last my question for you today. Uh, where can listeners find more information about Help Ukraine and Poor Alex and your new projects and initiatives? Sure. So our website is ukrainehelpvi, so as in Vancouver Island, .ca. Um, going there, you'll be able to see all of the programs that we do. Um, a Dictionary of Emotions and Wartime is listed under our events. Um, people can donate, people can find out how to volunteer, people can learn about what we do. It's all there. Yeah, thank you so much. And just to remind our listeners that today we have the opportunity to talk with Carmen McNamara and Anastasia 
Jose Constantino uh, from the Topic Grammar for Alice Society. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.